Hello. I hope that I'm coming through loud enough. Um, this is going to be a soft spoken explanation of my pedal board. I've done one of these before, but I've done a significant revamp since, so I wanted to do a new one. And I want to um, kind of take time on each one, but not too much. I don't want to get boring or redundant, but I want to um, give each one its proper um, recognition. So this is my guitar pedal board. It's full of guitar pedals. Um, I'll explain the setup and how I um, came to this point. This is a Roadrunner road case that it's in. The bottom tray holds all the pedals and the lid comes off and it makes it very durable for carrying. Get a better viewpoint. I'm going to try to hold the camera as steady as possible. These are the pedals that I use. And my signal comes in down here at the bottom of the board, runs through everything, and exits here. So I'm going to take you from start to finish, which means we will start goodness. Could have said holy shit. That was a close one. <clears throat> Don't know what type of person you are. I'm a holy shit person. So this is a DOD Octoplus. Um, this gives me an octave down from whatever signal I'm playing. This is first in my chain because I want a complete clean signal coming into this so I get the cleanest representation of the bass track copying what I'm playing as possible. I don't want any um, watering down or dirtying of the signal that I'm going to get out of this until afterwards. So this is one octave down, and you also have a direct level on it, and then you also have a tone control, which is something that you don't often see on an octave pedal. So this is from a cool era of DoD. It's very uh, early 90s, I believe, and um, in excellent shape for its age, so I'm happy to have that. And then from about the same era, we have the DoD FX-17 Wah Volume. So I use this as my Wah, and it stays in wah mode. And the cool thing about this is on the front, if I can see them, there are little trim pots. There's holes and inside there are internal trim pots. And you can tweak it to your liking. I've heard some people say this is not a good wah. It's probably because you didn't have it set to its optimal um, sweep for your taste. And I did have to take the front panel off to get to those, but um, once you get it dialed in, it's it's really sweet. And you step down on the heel, and that's how it engages. So it's an optical wah. And then it goes into the Boss Harmonist, which I'm, has a multitude of function to it, but I'm just using it for um, the whammy dives. So I step on that, and it dives. And actually, I could plug this in and we'll get some lights. I tug the power cord under here. When I've got the lid on, I can plug it in right here. And everything comes to life. The blue lights that you see under there are off of the power supply that's powering the majority of these pedals. 
And then we also have a couple like this guy and this guy that have dedicated power supplies. So from the harmonist, it goes underneath to the MXR Dynacom. So that's my compressor that just tightens up the signal that's coming into it, makes the louds a little bit, a little bit quieter and the quiet's a little bit louder so it's more uniform. I hide it under there because it stays on all the time. And then next to it, I have the electroharmonic silencer, which also stays on. And that is my gate. So when my clean signal hits it, the gate opens. And that's when it accesses all of my dirt sounds. Um, and that way there's no additional noise from them when I'm not playing anything because the gate's closed. So the signal's not running through these which is a godsend. I love gates that operate in that function. Um, so from the send on the silencer, it comes over first to the EHX uh, baseballs. So this is a 90s era Soviet made uh, electroharmonics baseballs. Um, while Sovtech was around, they all had this uh, matte black look, rough chassis, kind of crude looking switches and whatnot. This great hollow sound when you step on them. And this is a auto filter. So it does have a distortion circuit in it, I, which down is on for that. I never used that, but it's at the sensitivity right here and it opens when you play, it's triggered by how hard you play, a filter opens. So it's like a wah-wah, but it opens and then slowly closes back up. This seems to be the sweet spot for the sensitivity. I don't know why. This is dirty because it's old. I could probably stand to clean it up a little bit, but it's got a lot of character. So I just recently got this and I'm in love with it. It stacks very well into multiple dirt pedals. And then uh, my dirt chain, we have a modded Boss SD-1. So this is a good light overdrive. It stacks well into any of these to kind of change the character of whichever one it's hitting. Um, or it's just a nice light overdrive on its own. These switches here. Um, I believe this is a mid boost and this is a high cut, I believe. And then has that great Boss enclosure sound. And then, so that's my first dirt. We have, this is by a builder out of New Zealand called Tony Peppers. He has Peppers pedals. And uh, he makes some really cool, interesting things. This is a run of 10 that he did um, of a, it's a um, copy of an Earthquaker device's Acapulco Gold. I don't know if it's a completely exact copier, if he took some liberties, but that's what he said. He did a run of 10, two of each character from Always Sunny on it, just, I think just for fun, because he has a silk screener. And um, it's a cool little pedal. It's a cool little dirt. One knob is all you need, and that's where I like it set. So this guy into this guy is a really neat sound. Now, I'll usually stack two at once. Um, this guy, I can run into these, but I don't like to too much. Not really these two together. These two is cool. It's kind of like a broken up fuzz, like a uh, uh, Marshall Super Fuzz kind of sound. Um, and it does. this does go into this interestingly, but it's not super usable. But these two together is really nice. These two together is really nice as well. The Dark Matter is a good... Um, kind of average, um, not too much, not too little distortion, but it has a good low end. Um, and it dials in well, and TC stuff is cool, and it's a really inexpensive pedal, so it's not a bad one to get and try out. And I ended up really liking it, and it works well with others too. Um, like namely, the Dark Matter into the Fab Tone is a really cool thing. The Fab Tone, I wasn't sure what to expect, because it's got this Dan Electro 50s look to it. Um, but it's a really toothy, gritty distortion pedal. Um, it's not an overdrive, it's like a straight up distortion, but it has like real teeth to it, but also a good rumble. 
it's nice and full, it's nice and throaty mid-range. I like when things um, have like, like a thick throaty mid-range sound to them. So that's one of my, that's become one of my favorites. Um, and Dark Matter into it sounds good. The Peppers into it sounds interesting. And the SD1 into it opens it up really nice. Really, that's what the SD1 does to any other pedal. It just kind of brightens it up, crispies it up in a really nice way. Um, which it also does for the Boss Hyper Metal, which this is my newest acquisition, and I freaking love it. I wasn't sure what to think. Uh, it's a the follow-up to the HM2, the heavy metal. But this is for people like me who don't want the total Swedish death metal sound. We want a more fuzzy, boomy, but also crispy kind of sound. This is exactly that. I took a chance and I'm so happy with it. It has that cool black and orange aesthetic. When I was a kid, um, well actually still, my dad has a, uh, like a wedding band and they play cover songs. And when I was growing up, his like 10 years old, his guitar player had three boss pedals. And one of them was the Boss HM2, and I used to look at it with its black chassis and its orange writing and just go, that thing is freaking cool. And so that's one reason that I'm happy to have this on the board, but it just works really well. And the SD1 into it sounds great. Uh, the Peppers into it works, but that would be my least favorite. Um, but it still works. Um, the Dark Matter into it is like dark and brooding and really kind of boomy. And then this into it, the fab tone into it, has just this like awakened hyperdrive kind of sound, and it's just amazing. And then you throw the bass balls into any of those, and it's good, but into these two the most, it just opens up in this, the coolest way. The fab tone's really accentuating what the bass balls is doing, and then the hyper metal is just like rocking the hell out of everything. It's, it's, more than words can describe it. I love it. And then I do have one more on the way, a little sliver, skinny pedal. Um, the, a company called Moore makes these really skinny pedals like this size, and uh, they copy a bunch of different ones. So I have a triangle, their version of a triangle Big Muff on the way, which you, every iteration of my board has had some type of Big Muff on it. And, um, this one's cool because it's really small, but it's got like the classic Big Muff sound, but it's a little bit different from the Big Muff Pie, and I ends up I really like it, and I hear the two a bead together, and they're pretty darn close sonically, and I think it's really going to work well for me, and it's going to stack well with the other pedals, so that's going to be the last one in my dirt chain. And then from there, it goes back into the sounds are under here. I know I'm starting to talk faster and faster, but that's what I do when I get excited about my stuff, which I do. So... From the silencer, goes up to the volume pedal. You've got to be able to control your volume. And the volume has a tuner out. So that goes down here to our tuner, which is sideways. Uh, but I can still read it, and it just fits there very well. And uh, I like that. And I like that I'm running from the tuner out. Because normally, if you run through the tuner, it mutes when you engage it. And also, that's one more pedal in your chain. The more cable length you have, the more connections you have, the more signal loss you have. It's just inherent. Um, so, this takes it out of the chain. I can leave it on all the time if I want to. And then this is the Ecto-1, uh, because my son insisted that I put it there, and it really does fit very well. And then uh, this is the new age Batmobile. Um, so I got those about wrote down. And then this is just a tin of picks um, that I had a uh, Altoids tin that a lot of people have, and then I saw these Bob Ross mints, and I thought, well, how do I not do that? And it just says picks in it. So. Um, and then, so from the volume, it goes to this June 60. This is a very inexpensive course by TC Electronic. And I like the look of it, but it's based on the Juno 60 Roland um, synthesizer chorus circuit which just has the two buttons and I believe it's like a, an exact take but the only difference is on the Juno 60 you can use one or two 
on the June 60, you can use both if you want. I only like one, and I like the buttons instead of the knobs because I just have a hard time setting a chorus pedal. I don't know what depth, I don't know what speed, it's just option paralysis every time. So this makes it really easy and it's a great sounding chorus, and you'll always need chorus at some point, but it's not something that I use regularly. So I'm glad to have this unique one and one that's inexpensive too so i didn't go blowing like 200 dollars on a course that i never use um and then from there we have this buffer so remember i told you about signal loss well the buffer adds decibels it just bumps it up so that's why the lights on it it's powered and i got that from a good friend and so that sits right in the middle of my chain but after all my dirts and that way it kind of gives them a little bit of life back I believe it's a 30 DB boost um, so that's pretty cool and then we got my tab here I'll cover that in a minute and then from the buffer it goes to my first delay which is the BBE2 timer this is a bucket brigade delay which for those of you who know um, that's like the boss DM2 the original analog delay is a bucket brigade is the most famous bucket brigade this is based on that circuit um, I don't know how close they are but I know that this one sounds excellent but the feature that it has that no other analog delay has some analog delays have taps so I'll give them that but this is just an interesting feature to me and very usable is you have two different time settings so with an analog delay you can spin the knob it'll do that speeding up sound where the pitch is going up and you can really mess with it and get a lot of cool things but you have to set the knob instead of having two different time settings that you can switch between, which is great. I use it a lot for you know creating space and creating an effect, um, making something bigger, and it's very useful for that. So I love that one. I had it before, and I traded it away, and I regretted it, and I'm glad to get it back. So that's been on my board for a while now. And then we have another DOD that looks very 1980s computer game and that's why I gravitated towards it but it turns out it's a really usable good sounding phaser I've had a number of phasers I like the fact that this says phasor and the other phasers I've had they've all kind of hijacked your main tone a bit too much um, where, you know, it's clear that you have your phaser on and it's just overriding everything. It sounds like you're in a tunnel. Where this one colors it very nicely, but not too much. And it's just, it's perfect. I set the speed low. I can put the regeneration all the way up and it sounds great. So I am in love with this thing. And if it ever dies, I'm going to need to get another one. Um, and for its age, it's in very good shape because it's clearly like early 80s. It's missing the battery door. Um, but that's not that big a deal because a lot of them are. These two have the battery doors, by the way. I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, but, yeah, I love this. And I switched out the knobs so it looks cool. I like making things look neat, i.e. the toppers and the funky knobs were applicable. Um, from there, it goes down to my main delay, and that's a Marshall Echo Head. And I like this Marshall Silver Cane series. Um, I've had a couple of the pedals, but I came across this one, and you don't see it a whole lot. There's a few out there, uh, but the price range is strangely varied, and I think most of the ones I've seen are in Europe, um, but it's great. It's very similar to a Boss DD5, which I have for a long time, uh, with the modes and the setup of the knobs, but mostly because of the fact that it has an external tap, so that's what this guy is. You can just tap the tempo that you want the delay to be. Um, and it also has stereo outs and the setting that I use which is the same as I had on the DD5 is the panning so it runs out to two amps but it alternates between the two as it's delaying and that's just an awesome feature I don't know why that's not on every single delay pedal ever made because it's my favorite delay thing I think that I've ever had going on if I had to go with one delay pedal this would be it it's a cool little metal robot looking case so Marshall echo hang starts the stereo and then we go up to the line 6 DD4 which has a ton of functionality um, 15 different emulated classic delays 
vintage stuff, tape delays, it has a Boss DM2 in it, so much functionality, you can use an expression pedal. I use it for the looper only, and because it's good on the fly looper, you only get 14 seconds to record, but you can record, okay, now we're playing back, oh, I didn't like the way that one went, okay, I'm going to redo it, okay, now we're playing back, just like that, but, and you have um, half speed and reverse, and that's very cool. But the feature that this one has, the other ones don't, is the play once. So you press the play once and it triggers it, but you can keep re-triggering it. Dun, 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 uh, Dave Knudsen from Minus the Bear does this a lot. So that's how he makes a lot of the sounds that he makes. He has, he would travel with four of these. Um, one dedicated for delay and I think three for looping and he would loop them into each other so this is a very useful pedal I've had it twice before and missed it again and got it back and I'm very happy to be using it so stereo out of there down to the Digitech Obscura delay very cool obviously Digitech is all digital but this is an analog type delay funky functionality it had the settings are lo-fi reverse analog or tape and I have it set to tape and you can if it's not on you can hold this button and it'll go into tap mode or if it's on you hold it for two seconds and it goes tap and then you can tap how fast you want it to go and because it's set to tape it sounds like a tape reel spinning when it's changing speeds. It's amazing, that's mostly what I use it for. But it's got great functionality outside of that. Do this and you're back out of tap, and then you can turn it off. And you have a switch for tails, so when it keeps repeating afterwards, you can select whether to have that on or off. I keep it on, I keep the feedback high and the mix high, and it just kind of trails on without like overriding everything so it's a really cool delay and i love it and then lastly it hits the electro harmonic 720 with a sticker uh, of a picture that my son drew and i put that on there because i wanted to put it somewhere and also because this was a gift for my wife and i asked specifically for it and she was awesome and got it for me uh, for Christmas one year, but it, this is my stored loops. So it's got similar functionality with the half speed and reverse to the DL4, but it's got a lot more record time. You record, it saves the loop. The biggest thing that I wanted was that you could s play and stop with two separate buttons so you didn't mix it up. I know this one I'm playing. Okay, now I stopped. And you spin this and it just goes to which loop you have. You have up to 10 stored. I believe it's up to 11 minutes of record time or more. It's it's really cool. And then I go stereo outs out of there to my two amps. Uh, actually, I run three amps at my practice space. So one side to my main amp, which is a Marshall. And then the other side goes a splitter between a solid state orange and an old PV bass head because I need that low end. And then here I just use a, a Laney combo amp. So um, that is my board. I hope this was enjoyable. I hope I was not shaking the camera too much. I hope that if you play guitar but aren't into pedals, this gets you interested in pedals. I hope that I made enough noises. I tried to. Because pedal noises are just the freaking best. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching, have a nice evening, and uh, play guitar. Bye-bye.